Hi, welcome to another installment of Ethereum Mechanics Behind the Scenes. Uh, I've been offline a long time because wonderful things have been happening and I want to share with you some interim results that we are getting with the new Vector Ampere field. I have released the Vector Ampere field to the Patreon site. Um, it will be released, it will be made public to everyone as soon as I'm done ferreting it all out. And I'm going to show you some of the, uh, the physics results that we've been getting in the interim. This is physics version 2.0 and one of the advancements of physics 2.0 is that you can select between the basic or the vortex, which would be the, the, the new electromagnetism V5 and this would be new electromagnetism V4. For those of you who are not familiar with new electromagnetism V4 is basically just accounting, an accountant, accounting of all of the desktop measurable effects that I could find. Like, for example, Coulomb model is one of those. F equals Q, V cross B is other. Others I had to de develop from scratch, which uh, is new induction and new magnetism, which adds another term uh, to magnetism to account for all the effects I could find. And what I'm doing is I usually scrub people and, and look for other things to see if there's other effects I've missed. Um, now, new electromagnetism V5 is, an, is using Vortrix algebra takes the assumption that there's an underlying field and if we take the time derivative of that underlying field then we should be able to then be able to account for all of the desktop measurable effects and this has worked out wonderfully thank you in that um, the Vortrex solution has been able to account for the other things I have been not been able to account for with legacy theory um, and it's getting all the same answers as all of the desktop experiments we can run, except for one, which I'm not done with yet. That's why it's not, that's wrong. Which I haven't finished it yet. That's what we're waiting on. And it actually allows the second order system of pretons to be stable without having to need Coulomb's model. It is wonderful. I know that doesn't make any sense to you right now, but when we get to the other videos, when we release all that stuff, it's gonna make perfect sense. It's a wonderful thing. So let me show you where we are right now. What we have here is we're gonna to go to back to, we're gonna stay with basic, and I'm gonna show you the force diagrams. Okay, what this is, is force diagram. Up, at the, up in the center, right in the center of the origin, we have a target charge, uh, sorry, a source charge. Uh, at the center and it's moving with velocity uh, given by this little red arrow. I don't know if you can see it in the video. Okay, and what we have out here, what I call ro force roses. You know, what are the effects at a t target charge over here, another target charge over here, another target charge over here, and another target charge over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on this force rose right now. And what this force rose shows is if there's a target charge right at the center of the force rows that's stationary, the green arrow demonstrates what the effect of the source charge is on the stationary charge that's sitting here. Uh, if the charge is moving up in Z, then this represents what the force on that charge will be. If the force is moving along Y, then this arrow represents the force applied to that charge as it's moving along Y. If it's going in negative Y, and likewise in negative Z, and then if the charge is moving along positive X, that's going to be the force acting on the charge that's moving in positive X. And likewise, this is the force acting upon the charge that's moving in negative X. Okay, so this allows me to see the effects of a target charge at a point in space if it's doing any bunch of a number of different things. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to move off to the, this is the tar, this would be the effect up here at what I call 12 o'clock, moving, you know, in positive X, or sorry, that would be positive Y. Now we're going to look at the 1 or 130 position. And you can see that at the 130 position we have these effects. Now this, again, this is of the normal uh, new electromagnetism V4, again, which is highly representative of the things you can measure at the desktop and it's it's very good correlation with classical theory. Uh, there's some extra terms that are not in classical theory but every again everything in new electromagnetism V4 is derived from bench top experiments so it's basically a completely empirical data set whereas new electromagnetism V5 is a theoretical because it's developed on a hypothetical 
underlying single force that is, defines all other forces that are known. And that again, it will be really, it's the, it's been released in the Vortex Algebra 1.3 paper to the Patreon members. It'll be released publicly once I'm done ferreting all this out. And I think I'm going to sit down and have to write a paper on this one. Okay, if we go to the 3 o'clock position, okay, we get the standard right hand rule curl. That's what we normally see um, with a with char with a with a regular uh, magnetic field model. That's what we always expect to see that that curl. And now we're going to go to the six o'clock position. Okay, and in the six o'clock position, and what's interesting from the two, the two uh, from the noon position, everything is attraction. At the six o'clock position, everything is attraction. So at the charge in front and the charge behind, it's always going to attract. Okay, and what's interesting about these effects is these effects are always canceled out in a closed loop. So it's very difficult to measure these in a simple desktop experiment. And these cause me problems when I try to look at stability of the second order system of pretons. Because in the preton, second order system of pretons, we do not have a closed loop. And these have been causing me problems. Okay, now let's go and look at the new electromagnetism V5, which I'm calling the Vortrix solution. I gotta run it. There it goes. Okay, we're gonna go look at the noon position now. And in the noon position, you can see as the target charge moves toward the 12 o'clock charge, you can see the 12 o'clock charge is diverging as if that source charge is creating something that's pushing stuff out of its way, which is really cool. And let's go to the six o'clock position. And you can see as that target charge, which can be seen over here, I don't know if you can see it in the camera. Now it's just off the edge of the camera. You can see that that six o'clock charge is going into total convergence, which is a much better solution for the, the things I've been trying to reconcile. And let's just go to the three o'clock position. Ooh, three o'clock position, we do not get the curl. Ah, we don't get the curl. It's uh, this messed up thing, which makes sense when you finally reconcile it, and we'll reconcile it in other videos and show you that when we apply this to a normal loop of wire, we get the curl. As a matter of fact, let's do that right now. Let's go back and switch it back to the basic, and then let's go do a coil of wire. Okay, so this is a coil of wire. And here at the center of the coil of wire, we get, this is using standard new electromagnetism V4. Okay, we get the, because it's inside the, the coil, we get a left-hand curl. As you get closer to the wire, you get a left-hand curl. And then as you go outside the wire, oh, too far. Okay, we're just outside the wire here. This one's above the wire. I put one just at, at the wire above it in Z. Uh, we get the curl there, but, we all, but the one I'm more interested in is this guy over here. And you can see he now has the right-hand curl. Now, the reason why his arrows are smaller because all these arrows are drawn relative to the most intense arrow out there. So that all these arrows, force arrows, are all represented relative to each other. So they're all represented relative to the maximum force. Again, though, but we get the right hand on the outside of the loop. Okay, so let's go to the Vortrix. And what do we get? And if we're going to go through this, but we get exactly the same answer. So it shows how when we constrain things to closed loops of wire, that's why we can have multiple theories that give us the same answers, is because we're constrained to a loop of wire. And this is the reason why, and you can see by this force rose out here, we get the same exact right hand curl on the outside. And then when we come back, we get the left hand curl on the inside. I don't know if you can see that from there. 
there you go, you can see the left hand curl on the inside force rows. And so it's showing very, very good um, correlation with what we expect to see for normal wires. And I'm getting exact same experimental results as with new electromagnetism V4, including the anemic back EMF on the railgun prototype. So I'm more convinced now that the, the back EMF on the railgun prototype is the right EMF, and we're going to go ahead and build the railgun prototype. The other thing that's beautiful about this new electromagnetism V5 is that I don't need... Okay, this diagram here, this shows a source pre... This shows a second order system of pretons. The pretons are actually at the center of these little white rings. The little white rings are just there to show you if there is a preton, it would be at the, the tiny in microscopic particle at the center. And this one is the source preton, this is the target preton. And what's happening, they're in orbit about each other, like we do for the second order system of pretons. And this is the force in X present at the target. And you see this nice channel, this orbital channel that that preton's going to follow. What this is, this is the force in X. Green means that force applied to the target is to the right. Red means the force applied to the target is to the left. That means that this target is going to be stuck right in that tiny little channel. Over here, this is the same thing except this is the force in Y. So the force on this target, if this target, if this target preton decides to go a little bit faster, it's going to be pushed back. In other words, red means the force is going to be down in Y. Green means the force is going to be up in Y. And therefore the forces converge to keep this little preton in this little bullseye. If you overlay these two, you get a little, little tiny point, which is going to keep that preton contained. Now the reason for this big uh, masked out region here is if I don't have the masked out region, and I make the masked out region smaller, I can't see the detail out here. It's just a matter of color scale. So what I had to do is block off the intensity here so that you could see the little null here that the target preton is going to fall into. Now just to be clear, okay, these, this model does not take into account the propagation delay or what we have also called the retarded time effects of the field going from the source preton to the target preton. The stability that we had with this model, with the old new electromagnetism V4, required us to use Coulomb's model. And this model, with the new Vortrix, new electromagnetism V5, okay, the, the vector ampere field is all that is needed for the stability of the second order system of pretons. The beauty of this is it allows us to say now, for the first time, that Coulomb's model or the Coulomb field is an external effect. No more do we need Coulomb's model to make this stable. Okay, so we're going to get more into this and we're going to show once we get to the retarded time effects or the accounting for propagation delay that we're going to find that this shorthand actually still works and it's, it's valid even when you take into account retarded time effects. Uh, that's where it looks like it's going I only have, really have one experiment left to reconcile, and that experiment is, so this is the magnet, uh, this is the force table experiment that we did a couple of seasons back. Uh, this is the last experiment I have to reconcile. Once this is reconciled, I think we have our unified field theory. Because now, like I said before, I don't need Coulomb's model to make the second order system of preton stable. And that allows me now to say Coulomb's model, for once and for all, is not a fundamental field of the preton. It is something external to the second order system of pretons. And I'm able to, I'm able to make all the magnetic field models work from a pre, at the electronic level from the pretonic field model so far. It's really, really cool. There's an interesting aspect about this that is just mind-numbingly wonderful. I'm going to keep that secret until I'm done releasing the paper and I have it copyrighted, I'm going to release that idea to the engineer and 
uh, bridge officer staff of my Patreon uh, probably in a month or so once I get once I get all these other little details worked out but everything is looking really 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 good that this is the unified field theory because it's just one vector ampere field where I can define all the forces and it's giving me excellent results for the desktop experiments it's giving me excellent stability for the second order system of pretons and the most wonderful thing is it is so ridiculously simple that physicists will not believe it okay and that is the most beautiful part of it so anyway that's where I am right now next weekend I hope to get um, a little bit more detail out about this but next weekend is going to be a short weekend for me I may not produce anything next weekend the weekend following that I will definitely make the appointment with the um, bridge officer and engineer uh, I'll make the go-to meeting appointment so we can get that information out to you anyway I thank everybody especially my patreon folks for being patient with me um, you know th this stuff has been going and I, I should have put out more videos of where I'm at but um, as long as things are happening I'm just keep going down the rabbit hole um, so it's working out really wonderfully it's almost too good to be true um, but that it's so simple it has to be true that's the other aspect of it so anyway thank you all for my, your patience if you want to help out with this project please become a patreon subscriber uh, there's multiple levels with different benefits I'm gonna start uh, as time goes on I'm gonna start adding more benefits to the different levels uh, to, you know anyway um, anyhow thank you very much and this is uh, expect more in the next week or two thank you very much bye bye